In today's video, we are going to talk about the four major mutual companies and we'll go through their 2024 dividend interest rates. We'll also cover some additional information that a lot of people are really interested in. And if you are considering a whole life insurance policy and cash value is your goal, you wanna maximize it, this information hopefully will be very, very valuable. A lot of people have found it valuable. So what we'll cover is as follows. The first thing we'll do is just go through the updated dividend interest rates. What are the dividend rates with the four major mutual companies for 2024? And we'll see how much they have changed since 2023. Then we'll go through why the big four, which are your four major mutual companies? What are the specific reasons? So if you're trying to figure out what life insurance company should I choose, in, in order to ensure the maximum amount of cash value, which one do I pick? We'll go through why I think we should always look at the four major mutual companies and we'll go through the exact reasons why. On that point, we'll cover something that's very important that'll help you avoid buyer's remorse because this happens a lot with whole life insurance. And then I'll go through how I like to choose uh, the different life insurance carriers. So let's get on into it and have some fun. Beginning with the dividend rate update, what we have are your four major mutual companies, Mass Mutual, Guardian, New York Life, and Northwestern Mutual. You see their 2024 dividend interest rates. Mass Mutual is at 6.1%. Guardian is at 5.9%. New York Life, 6% flat. And then you've got Northwestern Mutual at 5.15%. If you look at what their rates were in 2023, what happened? Did the rates go up or down since 2024 or since 2023? All of them increased. We see the lowest increase was Mass Mutual. They increased by 10 basis points, 0.1%. New York Life was the highest, 20 basis points. And Guardian and New York and Northwestern Mutual both increased by 0.15%. So with the four major mutual companies, we see that their dividend rates have been increasing. And frankly, I've seen that to be the case with most life insurance carriers that specialize or where their core product offering is whole life insurance. We have seen dividends go up across the board. Here's the question that comes up a lot though. There's a lot of insurance companies, a lot more than just four. So why one of the big four? Meaning if you're interested in a whole life insurance policy, where again, cash value is the goal, why would I look at one of these companies instead of another company out there? This question comes up a lot. Maybe I'm speaking with one of those insurance companies or an agent that represents one of those, and I'm just trying to make sure that I get the best possible product for myself because it's my money going into the policy. Like I wanna make sure I get the maximum amount of money back from the insurance company. Here's the main reasons why. So the first one, Proof of performance, this is huge, meaning not we're not going with the policy just based on what we see on the illustration because the projection will show your cash value growing to these beautiful numbers over 20, 30, 40 years. But the question is, will it actually happen? This is a problem in the life insurance industry in my opinion. A lot of people get upset because they're interested in a policy they see great looking numbers on the illustration and then it under delivers. Why, why, why does that happen? We'll talk about that in a little bit. But having proof of performance, meaning a company that has actually delivered and we don't see over promising and under delivering, that's one of the number one reasons why I always recommend the four major mutual companies. Number two, follow the money. Where are banks, wealthy individuals and corporations going with their money first, when you look at where they position their money in cash value life insurance products, guess what companies always come up first? Your four major mutual companies. There's a reason for that. In experience, just in working with corporations and our largest client, which is a bank, when you work with the CFO at a large corporation, it's very common to see that they have experience with cash value life insurance, or they know someone else, perhaps a former colleague that has experience with cash value life insurance. So they know what questions to ask. They know what to look for on the company financials, meaning the insurance company financials. And most importantly, they know to ask for proof of performance. They wanna see that the product has actually delivered, not just projected good looking numbers and then under delivered. And then number three, which is important, ratings, size, 
and years the insurance company has been in the industry or been in business, when you look at those four major mutual companies, their ratings are all at the top. There's what is called a Comdex ranking, which takes all of your financial strength and safety rating carriers and gives you almost a grade, 100 being the highest. What you'll see is that your four major mutual companies range between a 98 and 100. As of the date of shooting this video, Mass Mutual has a Comdex ranking of 98 or Comdex score of, of 98, Guardians a 99, and then New York Life and Northwestern Mutual are both at a 100. So I mean, you're between a 98 and a 100 on your test, right? That's a very high grade, you're A plus, you're graduating at the top. But that does speak to where the company's assets are positioned and when independent rating carriers look at them, and it really gives us an, an idea of how safe our money will be with those insurance carriers. When you look at the size of these companies, they're all massive when you compare them to other life insurance companies, other mutual companies, that is. And when you look at how long they've been in business, all four of them have been in the business for over 160 years. That's a long time. All right. So very important. This will help us avoid buyer's remorse. And this ties in to point number one, the proof of performance. Can the life insurance company provide proof of performance, actual performance, not just dividend history, which we'll look at in a second, but real policies that have lived the test of time and we can see what did the individual pay into the policy and what actually happened over time. Can I see some proof, not just a hypothetical what if. So on the, on the topic of dividend history, let's look at this first because a lot of times when you request proof of performance or history of a life insurance company, the first thing you will be provided with is dividend history, which will look like this. So we'll look at three of the major mutual companies here. We'll start with Mass Mutual. So here's some dividend history from Mass Mutual. The bottom right will give you today's dividend rate for 2024. The 2024 dividend interest rate is 6.1%. Okay, fantastic. We see the dividend rate throughout history. You can go back to the 80s, and we see that it was quite attractive. Typically, what you'll see with dividend interest rates is as interest rates in the economy go up and down, dividends will typically follow. It has to do with what the insurance company is purchasing and where they are positioning their money, where they're always aiming to be as safe as possible. Life insurance carriers typically take on minimal, re minimal risk because they can't. They have to be able to pay out life insurance claims. But we see dividend history here, which is nice. Mass Mutual, 6.1%. Okay, quick question as we progress to the next dividend history sheet. If you've got $100,000 in cash value and you see that your dividend rate is 6.1%, what do you think your money is going to grow by? 6.1%. That's not the case though. A dividend rate is always a gross rate that is applied to your cash value after the cost of insurance and everything that comes with the life insurance policy. That's why it's so important to ask for that historical proof of performance, meaning actual policies. We'll look at some in a couple minutes. Here's Guardian's dividend history. The most recent year is up top, 2024, 5.9%. And you can go back to the 60s, we see where it was. Same trend in the 80s and early 90s, where dividend rates were very high. And then let's look at Northwestern Mutual as well. I like how they put their dividend history together because they go way back in time to the 1800s, just to show that they've consistently paid that dividend, which we've seen all of the four major mutual companies do this. But I do like just the uh, outlay of this. It's very clean and we just see decade by decade, what's going on here. But bottom right gives us the most current dividend interest rate at 5.15%. So this again displays the dividend history with some of the different major mutual companies. Is that dividend rate what your policy is actually growing by? No, it's not. Here's another question before we get into the historical performance. What is the best company right now? Is it Mass Mutual? Because they have the highest dividend rate right now? We use Mass Mutual a lot. 
our company, IBC Global, that is. We use them and recommend them a lot. Are they the best company? Based purely on dividend interest rate? No, they are not. Is Northwestern Mutual the worst because they have the lowest dividend rate right now? No, they are not. What we've seen when it comes to actual performance is that all four of these companies have produced stellar results, meaning we've seen real policies that have lived the test of time, produce strong cash values, even though when someone starts a policy, the dividend rate might be the highest with one company, so on paper, that projection looks like it's gonna give you the most money. But then in reality, it almost works out in the wash. One company is slightly higher than the other. Something I like to say is if you're going to go with the whole life insurance policy where cash value is the goal and everything's set up right, meaning the expenses are minimized, the cash value is maximized, the agent does everything right, you could close your eyes and pick one of those companies out of a hat. You can't go wrong with any of them. We've seen the consistent proof of performance from all four, and we've got it documented with very, very old policies that were started before I was born, and then policies we've written. So I've been in the business a little bit more than 10 years, and we've got policies that are about 10 years old where we've tracked the performance and we've seen them deliver. With that said, let's take a look. So here we've got historical performance, cash value growth, somewhere between four and six and a half percent. That's what we've seen happen, meaning the net internal rate of return, the net growth rate on cash value. If you said, I've had this policy for 30 years, I've put in X amount of dollars, here's how much I have in cash value, the dividend rates were up and down over time, what have I actually earned? The net return or internal rate of return will give us that. We've seen real policies with the four major mutual companies deliver in that range between four and six and a half percent. If I am speaking with someone today, in order to set expectations properly, I would say you can expect somewhere between a three, maybe five and a half percent growth rate. Three to five would be even more conservative. It could do better than that, but I'd rather set expectations a bit lower. And if you're still comfortable with it based on those lower expectations, and then you end up with more money, you're happy and we end up working together for a long time. If I tell you, well, historically it's done six and a half percent and then it only does three and a half or four percent, you happy? Probably not. So it comes, with, comes down to setting expectations properly. Dividend rates are low right now, historically. So I'd rather set things lower right now too. And again, this is based on what we've actually seen. Let's take a look at three historical policies. One is older than me. <laughs> the other two are policies that we put in force when I was early on in my career. So what we'll start with is a policy that was started before I was born. So we see that it is a mass mutual policy issued in 1980. And this was on a 50 year old individual. It is a 10 pay policy. What that means is that premiums are due for a maximum of 10 years. After 10 years, even if he wants to pay into it, he cannot. Okay, so we see in blue his annual premium. The column next to that, we see total outlay. This tracks each year's premium payment. So the first year, you paid in 14,445. You did the same thing next year. So two payments of $14,000 and change gives you a total of $28,000 and change. This is nice because you can see the total amount that was paid in and compare it with the next column, the cash value. And then on the far right, we've got the death benefit here, which is the dollar amount paid out income tax-free if we were to pass or when he passes. Let's look at two more things here. So first, we'll look at the yearly cash value growth. So what this is going to show us is as follows. We see the net dollar amount, the policy is growing by each year. So for example, the first year you pay in $14,445. You get a $250,000 death benefit. Your cash value is $68.75. Did your cash value grow by anything? No, you lost money. Next year, you pay in $14,445. Add $14,445 to your current cash value of $68.75, and what would you get? Would you get this number? 
a little bit less actually. You got your $14,445 back plus another $75 each year. This represents the yearly cash value growth, the dollar amount you receive from the insurance company each year. So a simple example, if you have $10,000 in cash value today, you pay $5,000, then you see that your cash value is worth $18,000. That means you got the $5,000 you paid back, but that's not part of your growth. That's money you paid to the insurance company. They gave you another $3,000. So the yearly cash value growth is $3,000 that year. This will isolate what the insurance company is giving you. What I do not want to do is include my payments in there because that's my money or that's your money going into the product. Next, you've got the total cash value gain. This one's a bit easier in my opinion. So when you look at this, what it is, is just the total amount of money you have received from the insurance company since day one. So example, you pay in a total of $10,000 over 30 years. So that'd be a little bit more than $300 per year, because over 10 years, you would have paid in $3,000. After 30 years, we're assuming you've paid in 10K total. Your cash value is now worth $30,000 at the end of year 30. So in order to get the total cash value gain, we look at the total cash value, subtract your total payments of 10K, and that gives you your gain of 20K. So how you can tell what your total gain is on this spreadsheet is like this. Let's look at the year 2000, which is year 20 for him. He's paid in $144,000. His cash value is $404,000. The difference is the gain, almost $260,000. So we see what the performance look, looks like as time passes. If we were to put a return on this, you'll see by 2020, the average return was just under 6%, I believe, the average over that 40 year span. And that lived through the 80s with very high dividend rates. Let's look at two more recent policies and I'll go through these quickly. So here's a policy that we started back in 2015 and it's performed quite well. And what we have here, the first nine years, represent what has actually happened. And this is with one of the major mutual companies. So years one through four, he paid in $150,000 per year. So that a total out of pocket of 600K. What is highlighted in yellow there is when he got his money back. And again, this is what actually happened. We pulled this data from the annual statements which he receives from the insurance company each year. So you've got the cash value, death benefit, but then here's your annual IRR, which is just the yearly rate of return when we look at it. First year, he paid in 150, he had 128, it's a negative hit. However, picked up over time. What did he earn last year? Again, this is what actually happened. 5.08%. What are the core benefits of the cash value in a life insurance policy? Why are people often interested in the cash value? Because it's a safe place to put money that they could access like a personal line of credit and it's got a really sweet tax advantage, meaning it's tax-free. He's in a high tax bracket. If you're in a high tax bracket, and you've got tax-free growth of over 5%, is that attractive without any risk? <laughs> it is to him. And then also, we see what things look like moving forward based on the current dividend rate of 6.1%. Remember I talked about setting expectations properly? So he does not plan on paying more money in, so we've got zero from this point forward. Here's his cash value growth with zero out of pocket. The dividend rate, 6.1%. However, that's not what he's actually growing by. We see the growth, just about 51K this year, which if we put a return on that, just about five and a quarter percent. So the dividend might be 6.1%, but after the company's insurance expenses and such, we see a net growth rate of five and a quarter, which the net is very important. 
And then we've got a couple of bullet points here just summarizing what he has done. And you see there, his cash value is producing more than 5% annually without any risk. That's the big one for him. And he's used his policy multiple times over the years, mainly for real estate, also his business, but heavily for real estate. He's very good at it. He knows what he's doing. And he's used this as a line of credit. He's got a nice bucket of cash here. So when an opportunity comes, he can access it quickly. And he was interested. We looked at two of the major mutual companies when we met in 2015. He was interested in mass mutual for a variety of reasons, but it's worked out very, very well for him. Let's look at one more policy and then we will wrap this up. I'll hit on the last point I wanna hit on today, which is a policy with Guardian. Someone has funded it with a total of $600,000. We see that he got his money back between years three and four. We see what things look like moving forward. Now, his original plan was to stop paying into the policy altogether after five years. However, just in speaking with him, he's liking what he's seeing. And he says, I want to keep on pumping money into this policy. And he easily can. He's planning to put in another 120K in year six. But if he doesn't, zero. You see the growth there, $25,000 and change. And it's going to continue to compound. This is based on their 2024 dividend interest rate of 5.9% moving forward. Again, this is one of the major mutual companies. A lot of info there. Hopefully this helped in terms of historical performance. Let's hit on the last point here, which is how I like to choose a life insurance company. And this is how we help most people we work with choose the company that they feel is best for them. Because again, if you're paying the same dollar amount in, you can pick any one of these companies and just close your eyes and pick one of them out of a hat. You cannot go wrong with them, in my opinion. Here's the big factor that often refines an individual's decision-making process. Flexibility. When you hear the word insurance policy, do you think of something that's very flexible? We can pay different dollar amounts into the policy. Or do you think of a boring bill <laughs> where I have to pay the same dollar amount every month, every year? Let me tell you about this super exciting cash value life insurance policy. <laughs> you can make a policy very flexible. So let's pretend you want a whole life insurance policy and you want to fund $10,000 per year. However, the idea of committing to $10,000 per year makes you nervous. It's something you think you can do, but what if you can't come up with the 10K? You're gonna be stressed out, you're gonna be thinking about it at night, you're gonna think, uh, think about where am I gonna get the money? Like, no, that's not what we want. We want this policy, policy to work well so you can see it grow over time, can access the cash value like a personal line of credit, and you've got a really nice tax advantage, all in addition to the life insurance. Back to this. You're nervous. What you can do, if the policy's set up correctly, if we design it the right way, is commit to $1,000. And then have the option to add the extra 9K, but you're not required to do so. So going with a company that has a lot of flexibility to allow you to commit to a small amount so it never feels like a burden, you can pay 10K every year, but in the event that life happens, you're just not comfortable funding the full 10K up front, you know you can commit just to the $1,000 and then at your discretion, you can add more money to the policy. Whether it's a total of 10K per year, total of 5K per year, whatever it might be, you have that control or that flexibility. That's where the company rules and such come into play. We, being IBC Global, primarily use Mass Mutual and Guardian because they're very, very flexible. They also work very nicely with brokers, which are independent insurance agents or brokers. We don't work directly for any, any specific company, but they're very flexible. To give you an example, Mass Mutual allows us to adjust payments very easily, one time per year. So what that means, the first year I might pay 10K, but then when my premium comes due the next year, if I said, hey, things are a bit slower, what I can do is kick it down as low as 1K, but let's say 3K. So I have the $1,000 commitment 
plus another 3,000 going into what's called my PUA rider. My point is we can adjust it one time per year. Then we've got Guardian. What they'll allow one to do is commit just to the minimum premium. So we'll take the $1,000 in this example. Got to pay a small PUA rider as well, but my point is we can commit just to the minimum. And then anytime we want to add more money, it's at our discretion. We just go into our online account, mail in a check, use our mobile app, whatever it might be, and we can throw more money into the policy. But those are two unique rules with two companies. New York Life does have some flexibility. Starts out similar to Guardian, but we have seen that it gradually lessens over time. We've got to get uh, approvals up front. Uh, Northwestern Mutual is not as flexible as Guardian, not since I last checked with them. They're the only company we don't use. Still a solid company. We don't use them only because they uh, only work with career agents. They don't work with independent brokers. However, solid company. I just just spoke with someone who has an old, very large Northwestern Mutual policy uh, with seven figures in cash value. It was about $6 million. And he sent a text saying, hey, I'm trying to figure some things out about, things out about this policy. Can I just roll it over to you with a different company? And I'm like, there is no way I would do that. No possible way. When you've got an old policy with a ton of cash value with a quality company, like, no, I would not do that. I can help you make any adjustments based on my experience with them in, in the past and just say, here's what I would ask your agent, but I would definitely keep them. And that I would say the exact same thing if anyone has a whole life insurance policy with any of these companies, even a smaller company, if it's been, been active for several years. Anyway, I'm starting to get too excited talking about cash value life insurance. I do hope that this video was helpful. Uh, let us know your thoughts. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Feel free to uh, reach out to us. You can find us on our website, ibcglobalinc.com. We'd love to talk all things cash value life insurance with you. And as always, I hope this helps. Thanks so much.